Hello, and welcome to Chapter 3 of our Introduction to Java course. Here we're going to talk about implementing classes. Classes are vital in object-oriented programming, and programming in general, most languages you use today are object-oriented, and so it's important that we delve into them and understand them. So, first things first, what are we going to learn in this chapter? How to implement a class, how to test that class. It's becoming more and more important that when you write code, you actually know how to test that code. Nobody wants to inherit garbage code. What are constructors and how, how come they're important? How to use instance variables, local variables, and write good comments. And last but not least, how to put it all together. So let's talk about instance variables and encapsulation. So in this first example, you see a tally counter. When we use a tally counter, we need to store information about the number of clicks and how to increment and decrement that. And to do that, we'll use an instance variable. Instance variables store the data of an object. They are localized to the instance of that object. An instance variable is storage location present in each and every object of the class. Class declaration specifies these instance variables. For example, here we have an integer declared as a value declared as type integer. An object's instance variables store the data required for executing its methods. Basically, they're kind of like local variables in a method. They are available to anything in that class. And if they're private, they are only available to items. An instance variable consists of three parts. The access specifier, public, private, or protected. Uh, type of variable, such as int, string. The name of the variable, following the same naming variable rules. All instance variables are typically private and you provide accessors to it. The reason for this is sometimes you need more complex behavior behind a variable and the easiest way to do that is have it actually call a private method. Each instance of an object has its own set of instance variables. So if you have two objects, A and B, and the, or in this case, concert counter and boarding counter, their values will be completely separate and distinct. This is important because essentially it gives each object the concept of identity. So how do we declare an instance variable? We always want to make them private. That's not required, but it's really bad programming practice not to do this. Each object of the class would have a separate instance of this variable. You want to control access. We have to give it its type. For example, here are a bunch of clocks. Each of them have common behavior but each of them has a different state. Objects of a class can have their instance variables set to different values. Otherwise, they're all duplicates of each other and kind of work. So if we take the counter class we were talking about before, we'd have a click method, for example, and it would increment the value of value by one. You'd call it by concert counter.click would implement it, would update the counter only for the concert counter, not for all the other counters. This brings us to encapsulation, another important idea in object-oriented programming. Encapsulation is the idea of hiding implement de de details and providing methods for data access. To encapsulate data, we declare number of variables private and declare public methods that access these variables. Encapsulation lets a programmer use a class without having to know its implementation. For example, behind the scenes, we don't care if a class uses an integer or a string to represent something. We can change it at will. Information hiding makes it simpler for the implementer of a class to locate errors and change implementation. So an example, a thermostat functions as a black box. We don't care how it works, but we can use it to raise and lower the temperature. When you implement your own classes, you're like the manufacturer. You put together a thermostat out of parts, but nobody really needs to know what's in it. They just need to know it works and how to use it. So we're going to walk through a quick example of some encapsulation of a basic class. So first what we're going to do is we're going to declare our class. We're going to make it public because we want other people to be able to use it. We're going to call it counter because that makes sense. It's a nice object based name. In it we're going to have one private variable or a private me member which we're going to call value and three methods get value, click, and reset. Get value should return the current value. As we said before it's not a good idea to publicly expose the actual value instead we use what's called an accessor to get us the value. The reason we do that is if somehow, for example, we wanted the value to be computed, we could do it here as well. 
click whenever this method is called it will increment click by one or value by one and reset resets the value to zero notice that we do not expose this value directly at any point either for update or reading so that's a good first example now let's talk about public interfaces to a class if you're going to implement a class you do need to know what methods it's going to expose to the outside world a bank account for example would have deposit money withdraw money and get balance without that you really can't do much with it so basically the face you're exposing to the outside world is called the interface if we want to support methods we need to define each method so for example for our deposit uh, for a bank account we would have a method deposit which returns nothing but takes a double amount um, withdraw which also returns nothing which takes a double amount and get balance which gets us our current balance method declarations are how you define the method that gets called and basically they consist of the word public which denotes which are going to be publicly available and then a return type and then a method signature just like in C++ so in the example we gave uh, bank account methods were declared as public because we want the world to be able to see them public public message can be called by all other methods in the program methods can also be declared private um, but they can only be called within the same class they're not part of the public inter interface this is great when you want to have auxiliary methods that public methods actually call then there's the idea of a constructor a constructor is something that initializes an object it allows you to set initial data it's similar to a method but has two major differences the name of the constructor is always the same as the name of the class and they have no return type you cannot return anything from a constructor the best you could do is throw an exception and that's kind of a bad thing to do anyway so for our bank account class we're going to define two constructors one which takes no parameters which just sets up the bank account to have no values and the other which would take an initial balance and here's some examples of each notice again constructor name is always the same as the class name because they take a different number of parameters they can have this more than one can have the same name that's called operate that's called overloading a constructor that takes no arguments is called a no argument constructor and those are the simplest types the statements in the constructor body typically set the instance variables of the object it's a good idea not to do anything that takes a long time in a constructor because it can freeze up the constructors and methods of the class go inside the class declaration just like every other method so public constructors and the public methods perform uh, the creation of the public interface of the class these are the operations that a programmer can actually use so reviewing the overall syntax of a class we have the class name our private member variables our public constructors which are used to initialize member instances of this object and our public methods which actually do something usually on those private member variables here's an example using one of those bank account classes to do a couple observations. Right? transfer money for example from one account to another we're going to define a transfer amount we're going to withdraw money from mom savings and send it to harry's checking now there is something interesting here in that there's no way to guarantee where the money went after you got it but that's basically handled by more advanced object constructs so now we can actually add interest so for example we take the interest amount and compute it and then add that to the account programmers use objects of the bank account class to carry out important tasks without knowing how the bank account objects store their data or how the methods work basically we could change all the internal stuff and you don't even have to know the difference when we go to comment our class we usually want to make sure that the public interface is well commented um, Java has a standard form for documentation comments that a program called javadoc can pull and create a nice set of HTML pages for so it's useful to follow the convention 
basically a comment with slash star, you do it slash star star. And in it, you should describe the member's pur purpose, method's purpose, describe each parameters. If you, describe, if you start a parameter comment with at sign param and the name of the parameter, it will include these nicely in your Java doc. Similarly, you can do the same thing with the return value. For a method that has no arguments, omit the param tag. And if methods have a return type of void, uh, omit, the, omit the return tag. Similarly, end with a st star and then a slash. Here are a couple examples. Notice here that we are modifying the declaration of withdraw to include comments. Here's what we say what it does. And then here we define what the parameters do. Um, very clean and nice to have it generated for us in a nice usable format. Um, here's a quick uh, look at what Javadoc would actually generate, which this is a Now we're going to talk about actually implementing the class. The private implementation of a class consists of the following parts. Instance variables, which are variables hidden but available to the class, the bodies of constructors, and the bodies of methods. All these are implementation details. Determine the data that each bank account object contains, for example, in the bank account example shown earlier. What does the object need to remember so that it can carry out its method? Each bank account only needs to store the current balance. So the only variable we need for it is a double value called balance. An object needs to store the data required for its method calls. It's important to remember that. Otherwise, it'll have to get it from an external source. Now, constructors exist to initialize the instance variables of the object. Basically, they're ready to set up the object to go. A no argument constructor can exist that sets the balance to zero, or we can overload it and have a second constructor that sets the balance to a value supplied. When you create an object with a constructor, the following things happen. First, we're going to create a new bank account object. Then we're going to call the second constructor because there's an argument. We're going to set the parameter value initial balance to 1000. We're going to set the balance instance variable, the newly created object, to initial balance. We turn an object reference that is a reference to the in-memory location of the object and store that reference in the final variable. Again, here it is, we create the object, we set up the initial value, we store it, and finally we return a reference. A constructor is like a set of assembly instructions. So when we build methods, there are two questions you want to ask. Is the method a mutator or an accessor? A mutator method updates the instance variables in some ways. An accessor method either retrieves the val a value or computes the value from data contained within the object. So a deposit method would be a mutator method because it updates the balance. Withdraw method would also be a mutator. It also updates the balance. Get balance simply returns a value, the balance, so it is an accessor. So here's some examples. Um, here, when implementing a class, we've got the class bank account declaration. Here's a private member variable. Here's a way to get our balance. Here's the body of get balance, which shows that all we're doing is returning the value. We make a deposit through a mutator. And here we have a constructor. And the default constructor sets the balance to zero. Here's sample code for the bank account. And um, feel free to look at it and play with it. Now. Interestingly, though, we finished building our class, and that class can't be executed. There's no main method. So we want to make sure it works. It's a really good idea to test things in isolation. That's one of the advantages of using classes. So in Java, we can use what are called unit tests. A unit test verifies that a class works correctly in its isolation outside of a complete program. This is, a, this is different than functional testing or end-to-end -end testing. So how can we unit test? Well, to test a class, we can either do uh, take advantage of an environment for interactive testing, like JUnit, 
or write a tester class. That's what we're going to do in this class. Tester class is a class with a main method that contains statements to test another class. Typically, it carries out the following steps. Construct one or more objects, invoke one or more methods, print out the results, and print the expected results. So here's an example for our bank account. We create an object. We invoke some methods on it. We get our result, and we get what we, we print out what we think it should be. We should know what the results are ahead of time. So to produce a program, you combine both bank account and the tester, and you can create it as a complete project and run the whole thing, and you'll see the output you hope, and you'll know your class works. So local variables are not the same as instance variables. A local variable is declared in the body of a method. When the method exits, the local variables are gone. Primer parameter variables are declared in the header, and they are not the same as local variables. Local and parameter variables belong to methods. When a method runs, its local and parameter variables come to life. When the method exits, they're destroyed immediately. Instance variables belong to objects, not methods. When an object is constructed, its instance variables are created. The instance variables stay alive until no method uses the object. Instance variables are always initialized to a default value. Numbers are initialized to zero. Object references are set to a special value called null. A null object reference references no object at all. You must initialize all local variables or else you're going to get an error. Now we're going to talk about the this reference. Two types of inputs are passed when a method is called. The object on which you invoke the method and the method arguments. The object on which you invoke the method is referred to as this. It's an implicit parameter of every method call. All other parameters are explicit. So this method actually has two parameters. It has the implicit parameter, this, and it has the explicit parameter, amount. When we refer to an instance parameter inside a method, it means the instance variable of the implicit parameter. This reference denotes that implicit parameter. So when you say balance equals balance plus amount, you're actually saying this dot balance equals this dot balance plus amount. When you refer to an instance variable in a method, the compiler automatically applies it to this reference. You can leave the this reference in, but I like to remove it. I think it's cluttery. Some programmers feel that inserting the reference makes the code clearer. I kind of think the exact opposite. So this is the object that you're calling the method on. This reference can be used to distinguish between instance variables and local or parameter values. Here we've got balance and this dot balance, and the way we tell them apart is this. A local variable shadows an instance variable with the same name. If you, which means basically you can't see the instance variable unless you use this. In Java, local and parameter variables are considered first when looking up variable names. So, if you want to guarantee that you're seeing the this value, you use this. A method call without an implicit parameter is applied to the same object. For example, if you say withdrawal 10, it calls withdrawal within the class. And that covers everything for this chapter.